Um, what I'll do right now is um, reflect a little bit on what the, uh, the minister said. I thought it was, uh, these were excellent presentations. Um, and also give you HP's viewpoint on education reform, um, not only in the Arab world, but also on a global basis. The first uh, question I'd like to ask is, you know, what's wrong with this picture? As the minister from Libya said, uh, there's been amazing growth in technology, and this technology has disrupted the traditional modes of education. No longer is it enough for students to sit through lectures uh, given to them by the sage on the stage or the traditional uh, teacher. Let me give you some evidence why that's the case. First, these are World Bank uh, statistics. First, you can see in the Middle East uh, and in North America that the purchase of landlines has flattened. So no longer are people buying uh, telephones. This doesn't seem very extreme, but as the minister uh, mentioned, let's take a look at mobile phone subscriptions. Pretty amazing. So it starts to go up right around 2000, and you'll see this is traditional non-linear growth. Students are connected not just when they're at school, and not just when they're on the telephone at home, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And because this disruption has, is happening to the youth, it affects our schools, and we must change the way that we deliver content and curricula to students. We must also change the way that we assess students, and we also must make sure that any discipline that they, that they learn is within the context of ICT, and that we're imbuing them with 21st century skills. What should the picture look like if it's not a, a traditional classroom where a, where a teacher is, is talking and students are listening and busily writing notes? For us, we believe through big data, through cloud technology, and through the pervasive use of mobile tablets and phones, that we can effectively personalize learning and personalize the curriculum, which means that each individual student will be presented work, homework, and problems in the uh, STEM disciplines that are appropriate, not for their grade level, but for them. And it will enable administrators and students, or administrators and teachers, to intervene on a class-by-class -class basis, not after the PISA scores are returned, not after the year-end testing is returned, but at that very moment. So harnessing both the client technology and the technology of the cloud. We also believe that through this notion of persistent access, that school and education doesn't, isn't confined to the school hours, and that students uh, can learn just as much outside of class uh, and in the world. And mobile technology allows them to do this. Through immediate feedback uh, and engagement, whether that's tactile, whether it's through a pen, whether it's through voice commands, uh, and now whether it's through uh, fancy glasses, uh, students are now being engaged uh, across you know, sort of all of their senses, which allows opportunities for, for learners of multiple learning styles to be addressed. Uh, and then finally, the, long, the single most important long-term benefit to education to nation states is jobs and is skilled workers to fill those jobs, whether it's an architect in Morocco um, or whether uh, it's, it's an energy worker uh, in Iraq. This has profoundly changed the way that HP approaches education. Instead of asking ourselves the question, how many computers can we sell to governments to give to their students, we've approached it in com a completely different way, an approach that we call society-centric design. Because we also believe, in addition uh, to what the minister from Morocco said about jobs and skilled labor and this dearth of 7,000 highly skilled workers in Morocco, we also agree with the minister from Lebanon, who says that education, or I agree with him in that the notion that education is an exceptionally effective antidote against conflict. And this is how uh, the, these two short-term and long-term um, horizons uh, make education very, very important. 
And at HP, we're approaching it through the five different lenses. First, access. We know from hearing from the minister from Palestine that there are problems with getting broadband rolled out for a number of different reasons. How do we get students online in the first place? HP just rolled out, or is in the process of rolling out, 1.5 million notebooks to students in Uttar Pradesh uh, in India. The vast majority of these students, it's their first PC, not just for them, but for their family, and getting connected is an absolute essential part to a 21st century curriculum. So step one is access. Step two is quality. It's not enough just to provide technology to every single student. We have to provide quality. And internally, we like to talk about the very simple equation, access plus quality equals outcomes positive educational outcomes. We also believe that the notion of engagement is very, very important. Uh, engaging students at their grade level with age-appropriate technology, with age-appropriate uh, software and curricula, uh, and also, as I mentioned before, the theory of multimodality, that some students learn better when they can manipulate um, a graph on standard deviation than just hearing about it theoretically. We're also absolutely concerned with efficiency and how we make educational systems more efficient. We know about the global ebb and flow of the economy and we have to build in sustainable models for funding and for support of education technology programs. And finally, innovation. Instead of just standing still, we want to innovate. And we've done so through our HP Catalyst program. I'm very, very happy to see many of the countries that participate in HP Catalyst. There are over 46 um, education um, instructional innovation programs happening around the world right now. And we take those, the learnings from that, and we put those capabilities into our products for education. So I've already gone through these one at a time, but I'll just reiterate. The first step is access, making sure that every student Every student has a right to an education and making sure that every student is on an equal playing field and every student is connected. Next, quality. As the minister from Jordan said, it's not enough just to say or think or feel something will have an educational impact. But the quantitative analysis, the notion that learning metrics are very, very important and what can we learn from learning metrics in order to make our education interventions through technology more effective. And when I say more effective, I mean higher PISA scores. I mean more skilled workers. I mean a higher GDP per capita. Next, engagement. Engagement for students of all learning styles, but also engagement for students 24-7, through the cloud, on-premise at school, um, and in the way that the students learn best, by giving them those choices. Efficiency, by allowing uh, e-learning and m-education, there are some cost efficiencies associated with that. Um, we want to make sure that we enable those. And finally, innovation. Um, by practicing the theory of creating shared value, HP can acquire a profound understanding of the education environment, even as ephemeral and as changing, quick changing as it is and at the same time, build in long-term economic value for the countries in which we operate. This notion of creating shared value is something we practice on a daily basis, uh, and you'll see it um, in our products and services that we bring to education. The last comments I'll make are really about um, you know, HP's credo of make it matter. There's a reason that there's so many dedicated HP employees here today supporting an unbelievable number of dedicated ministers um, for the Arab Education Summit. We're not in this for the money. We're in this to help further education. And everything I've heard from the ministers, I was nodding in agreement most of the time, but I think we can all agree that we have a shared purpose to improve the quality and access, or the access to and the quality of education uh, for all students throughout the Gulf, with the end goal of a more peaceful, just, and prosperous Gulf and, and globe. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I have one more, one more thing, sorry. Um, 
we have a lot of experts here uh, from HP, uh, myself excluded, of course, but we have a lot of uh, experts here. Um, and you'll see the, the biographies uh, in this. It's available at our booth. Please, e either during this session this afternoon uh, or just find one of us. And there, we have experts in cloud. We have experts in one-to-one -one computing. Uh, we have experts in funding models um, for developing nations. So once again, thank you very much. I appreciate it.